Welcome back. The thrifting gods have once again smiled upon us, because today my co-host and I have the privilege of showing you an interesting little Japanese radio that can do much more than play top 40 hits on repeat. It can save your life. Cue the intro! This is the Ray Jefferson RDF Direction Finder radio. It says so on the front. It's a multi-band radio capable of picking up AM, FM, longwave, and VHF bands. But the kicker is its direction finding ability. You can use this radio to pinpoint the source of certain types of radio transmissions you find. And today, we're going to try it out. Now, I know you guys don't like to listen to me dragging on too long about stuff, so I will try to keep this brief. But before we get into the demo, we have to do a little background on what's actually going on here for context. Context. Radio has been around for over a century, and it hasn't always just been used for playing Justin Bieber songs on repeat while you work at the bank. I don't miss that job. Everything from two-way communications to radio beacons have been transmitted regularly over radio waves for as long as radio has been around. And by using the right kind of antenna and receiver, you can actually figure out the direction that that radio signal is coming from with a good degree of accuracy. By taking a direction reading from two or more locations, you can figure out the position of a given transmitter, assuming you also have a map and a ruler. I like to use a car too because it gets over 120 degrees here regularly, and I'd rather not walk that far in this heat. All right, so I went and tried it out to see if I could make it work. And much to my surprise, I was actually able to triangulate the location of the transmitter I was aiming for. It really worked. Now, I grant that because I was doing this as a test, I already knew where the transmitter was, so I knew approximately what I was aiming for. However, despite my total lack of experience with these things, I actually managed to make it work. But we will get to the test footage later. For now, let's take a look at the radio itself. The front is a classic 1970s design complete with fake wood accent and chrome trim. The different bands are displayed each in their own color on the dial readout with a not very bright dial light for nighttime viewing. The button's in the top left corner of the speaker grill. On the right, you have your tuner knob, a coaxial knob which controls the power and volume and the signal strength of the direction finder, the band selector knob, and a tone control because you always have a tone control. Is it even a radio without tone control? I mean, really. You have two switches at the bottom. One switches between the regular radio and the direction finder. The other engages the automatic frequency controller, which prevents signal drift. The back and sides are finished with a padded faux leather and stitched around the edges. The headphone jack on the left side is monaural, and the handle can be locked by tightening the knurled screws. I like how they included a rounded slot to tighten them with a coin. Who hasn't used a coin as a screwdriver? I think we've all been there. The real magic of this radio, however, is the top. The square pencil case looking thing is a ferrite loop antenna, which can detect the direction of a signal. Below it is a degree indicator. By aligning the indicator to the north, then aligning the antenna to the signal, you can find the direction of the transmitter. The top of the antenna even has a little set of flip-up sights for more precise degree readings. The direction finder meter is just to the right of the dial. A three-foot-long regular antenna is also present, which telescopes and springs to preset positions, which I appreciate. Now, direction finding is a little more complicated than just point and shoot. As it spins, you actually get two null points 180 degrees apart. That's what you're actually looking for. Some DFs will have a second phase circuit with a sensing antenna to give you just one null, but this one doesn't seem to. But that's not a problem if you're using triangulation. The two lines only intersect in one place, which is the spot you're looking for. So it's not really a big deal. I struggled to find any signals on the bands other than AM and FM. I was able to find the direction of several AM transmitters in the Coachella Valley pretty easily. FM, however, works differently enough that this little radio doesn't detect the direction of the signal. I tried it anyway, but I gave up when I found a good new wave station and just sat on my porch for a while. Oh well. Let's take a look at the inside of it. On the back, there are two little leather straps that hold the back cover closed. Unsnap them and the back folds up to reveal the battery compartment and a paper cover over all the electronics. Here's a close-up of the writing. You can pause it here for a sec if you want to read it. Lots of stuff underneath. I don't really know what any of it is, but it looks cool. The antenna had a wire soldered to it, which had detached at some point. I just resoldered it and it was fine. It also came with a little mono earphone still in the plastic, which still works. It all works perfectly. I was shocked how good the condition is considering it came from a thrift store. There are no crackles in the potentiometers, no scratches in the leather or scuffs anywhere. A little bit of gunk on the tone knob was about the only thing I could find wrong with it. And I think I can get that off if I scrub it carefully. The lettering is even all intact, which is super rare. 
I wasn't able to find out much about Ray Jefferson or Jetronic as a company. The radio itself was built by a Japanese OEM manufacturer. That much I could find. According to a few forum posts I found, the OEM might be either Hitachi or Onkyo, but I can't seem to find any proof of that. The only examples I've found of similarly branded products are other marine direction finder radios from the late 60s through the mid 80s. Normally I'd want to do a deep dive into the company's history, but I can't find any info on it. So I guess that means we just need to go out and find some transmitters. All right, so I don't know if you can hear me with the wind, but I'm out here in the desert. It's well over 100 degrees. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna try to do this quickly. I've got the radio already set up. i uh, kind of cheating a little bit. I know exactly where the transmitter is, roughly. I've already tuned the, or I've already turned the radio and set the little compass thing so that I know the exact direction. I use my phone to do the uh, compass. And so all I'm gonna do is basically take a reading on it. Now I have it tuned low enough that hopefully you can't hear it, copyrights and all that. And uh, I'm just gonna try to find the direction that the signal's coming from. I'm looking at the little level meter here on the front to find the null. That seems to be the low point. And it looks to be about two hundred and fifty five degrees. So I'll go on to the next point, we'll catch up there, see if we can triangulate this thing. All right, noise notwithstanding, I'm in the second location, it's now 115, uh, we're going to try the second angle, I'm quite a few miles away from the first location. We're just in town, I find it easier though, just for this test. I want to make sure that I can look on a map and find the exact spot where I was sitting in both places. That's why I'm choosing to, I'm choosing to do it in the middle of the city. Um, just makes it easier for a test. So let's give it a shot. Looks like the low point. Take another reading. We're looking down through a hole in here at the scale, and it looks like it's about 200 and maybe 12 degrees. All right. Theoretically, that's all I need. So I ended up finding a point about three miles away from the actual location of the transmitter. I'm sure it would have been less than a mile if I had taken more than two readings. The first one was off by quite a bit, but the second one was nearly dead on, only a couple degrees off. If you're wondering, I was aiming for the KGAY 1270 AM towers near the junkyard. Not bad for a little analog radio from the 1970s. This thing could potentially help you navigate if you were out to sea, or at least figure out about how far away land is, assuming you remember basic trigonometry. It's funny how just by being clever, we were able to navigate great distances using only basic tools for centuries before GPS. Compasses, clocks, sextants, and basic math got us all around the world. Now before I leave you, there are just a couple more things I found while researching this radio that I want to talk about. One thing I discovered was something called fox hunting, which is where people hide a small radio transmitter and then you go out and try to find it. That sounds really fun. I want to do that sometime. The other thing I learned about were something called Vortac antennas. They don't really have anything to do with this radio, but I just thought they were interesting and I wanted to mention them. VOR antennas, or VHF Omnidirectional Range Antennas, are navigational aids for aircraft that have been around since the 1940s. Vortac antennas are the same thing, but have the added TACAN, or Tactical Air Navigation System for military use. Vortac. My understanding is that most of them are being retired within the next few years, being replaced by GPS systems. So keep a lookout for those while you can if you're into spotting that kind of thing. 
Thank you for staying with me for this. I really appreciate it. And if any of you have any experience using direction finder radios or know anything about Ray Jefferson or Jettronic, I would love to hear about it in the comments. And if you liked this, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel out a lot. And as always, stay metal. Thank you.